So, before we get started, everyone has probably seen this a bazillion times. Uh, please do not make purchases based on any forward-looking statements, although there won't be any because we're not that cool. So, my name is Brian Kwong. I'm the Salesforce MVP. I'm a certified admin, certified developer, and, I don't know, I'd like to talk about flow. Today, I'm joined with... I am Mark Ross. There we go. I am also an MVP, also a certified administrator and developer. Also, love to talk about flow. So, before we get started, let's talk about what flow is. So, visual workflow is a business process automation tool. So with Flow, you can do a whole bunch of things. You can create forms and display data. You can create logic trees and perform certain actions within those trees. Who all used Flow? Oh, that's a good question. Who all made one? Okay. 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 Well, that's a good question. That's great. That's a good Great. Then I won't bother to tell people they can you know, also update, create, or delete stuff. Because they already know. So Flow looks kind of like this. Right? It looks kind of like a Visio, right? Some kind of process document. Hello, I'm going to charge a little flashing arrow. Whoever did that was brilliant. So, why are we here? Well, Visual Flow for me is a declarative code for admins. It's the new powerhouse for admins to basically manipulate Salesforce.com like the admin gods we are. <laughs> Needless to say, Mark and I are big fans of Flow. Really big fans of Flow. We're Flow fanatics. You may say, we're Flow fanatics. <laughs> Thank you, Flonatic, Brother Brian. Welcome, everyone, to the annual meeting of the Flonatics Association. For those of you who may be new to our little cabal, a Flonatic loves to create flow. They replicate, or they replace their triggers, their apex triggers they have with flows. They know their vocabulary, and you must, of course, enjoy flow country, and there will be much much flow country. And now, if everyone will please stand. I'm serious. Yes. Audience participation <laughs> is required. Stand. We warn you with Twitter that we are the audience participation. We shall now open up our annual meeting for the full act push. Please say it with me. Raise your hand. I, my name. I, my, my name. name. Pledge to uphold the values and the best practices of the Flonatics. Pledge to uphold the values and best practices of the Flonatics. I solemnly swear upon the pain of Apex to share and spread the good word of the Flonatics to all who will listen, and especially to those who don't. I solemnly swear upon the pain of Apex to share and spread the good word of the Flonatics to all who will listen, and especially to those who don't. I shall forever hold flow as my primary starting element deep in my heart, mind, soul, and web browser. I shall forever hold flow as my primary starting element deep in my heart, mind, soul, and web browser. I shall never underestimate the power of the flow. I shall never underestimate the power of the flow. I shall forever remain flow efficient. I shall forever remain flow efficient. It's difficult to have fun that. May the flow be with us always. May the flow be with us always. And also with you. <laughs> All right. So we shall start by reading our recitation from the Holy Flow Code. You can see it is a very well-cherished, leather-bound book. Not recently blocked by FedEx Kinkos. No, not at all. <laughs> flow Code number 42. A phlegmatic saves frequently. All right, I know this is really kind of stupid way to start things off. And I don't mean the pledge, I mean saying you should save your flow. And that's because we get all, all excited. I don't know about you, but this has literally happened to me. Although the error message is faked, I spent an hour creating a flow, and all of a sudden, something goes wrong with my computer. There's a bug, or maybe. You know, the internet connection went down, or I spilled my soda all over my keyboard, and everything is lost. So, when we're talking about best practices for flow, we're going to start you off really simple and work our way up to more complicated stuff. So, the most simplest thing you can do is save and save frequently. The great thing about flow is even if you're not sure that you want to keep what you're currently working on if you're making an update, that's fine. You go save a new version, and that way, if you decide, you know, I really think the changes I just think are just kind of stupid, like something Mark would do, 
then you can go ahead and go back to the old version, and you'd be fine. Hey, I just not caught that. I told you you're slow. Code number 54. A fanatic never feels obligated to use a visual force game. Yeah. This is a good one. How many people here use visual force all the time when they use one? Too many hands went up. Shame on you. Okay, so there's only a few reasons why you would ever use visual flow. The first one's up at the top. You're just redirecting the user to a record that flow created. Now, you can't do that without using the visual force and the little apex because you don't know when the flow activated what the record ID is. So you can't pass it out. So you have to be able to pass something that can receive it, and that's the threshold point. You're trying to change the look, the feel, the style, and the flow, or you absolutely, positively, you can't get away with it have to use a custom controller, you know, a visual force controller. Um, those are the only three reasons, and I put the last one down there simply because I lack imagination, and I couldn't think of an actual reason why you would ever have to cause it. I don't know why either. So there's really only two reasons you should ever have to use a visual flow with your flow. The right way to do it is with the flow URL. So highlighted up there, you can see the flow URL that my wonderful Dreamforce 2014 flow is using. You can put that in a custom button, custom link, and you can use Salesforce merge fields like anything else. So if you're going to redirect the user back to a record that already exists, all you need to do is what, use what's called a ret URL. Am I pronouncing it? Yeah. Okay. I say ret URL. So here the ret URL is simply just the opportunity account ID, and that way when the user goes and finishes the flow, it takes them to the account. You can do that to the opportunity and contact, it doesn't matter. As long as you're able to get to the ID field in your custom button or custom link. And with that. Next reading from the flow code shall be code number 72. Never forsake false elements in a flow. Now if you're not certain what a false element is, basically when you are creating a flow, any time that you have a record create, update, look up, or delete, you aren't restricted to just one arrow coming out of those elements. You can draw a second arrow. You may not have actually even stumbled upon this. It's not really documented, uh, except like in a couple of places in, in the official documentation. It's kind of a small thing. Um, by drawing a arrow from one of those locations out to another box, if a fault occurs, because who all has gotten that error? Right, an unhandled fault has occurred, and that is the most useless error message in the history of mankind, am I right? Because it tells yes. you exactly what happened wrong, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so, by actually saying on this particular, let's say we've got a, a record lookup here. There we go. On my record lookup 